So there's something interesting happening in the Linux space, specifically the Linux desktop space. I've started watching some of Linus Tech Tips, and I think Epos Vox both are, you know, Linux noobs, but coming into the space and, and giving it a fresh set of eyes, which if you've been in Linux for a while, it just, well, it just works a little differently than everything else. And I wanted to jump on the desktop real fast just to kind of show you an idea for maybe fixing a lot of the things that happen in Linux. So here is my desktop environment. And it's not really a desktop environment. It's a Linux without it, and it just uses a window manager. And a lot of times what happened when I was in just different things and I was looking around was when I looked through Linus and Eposvox's videos that they've released yet, I think Linus is still working on kind of getting everything done. I will say, looking at that new user experience, a lot of their gripes was things just didn't work or they would install too many packages and then it would just get real wonky or they'd make some setting changes like everyone does when they come to Linux and breaks their system. And I wanted to fix that. I, I, one thing that stood out was, hey, if you're on Steam, and I think I have Steam on here, let's just uh, pull up Steam. I wanted to see what would happen if I created something that didn't have a desktop environment, but instead was based on server with a window manager. Because Linux server is really, really good. Linux desktop is this cobbled together Frankenstein mess where you might be using all these different packages. And then at the end of the day, it just doesn't work the way a lot of folks want it to because they don't know all the packages or they don't know which one to go to. So they blindly start installing stuff and it breaks their system. So Linux desktop, in a lot of ways, some, some could make the argument, is less stable than Windows or Mac uh, it, for a new user, I should say. <laughs> Asterisk. But I wanted to make something like um, this. And what it is, is based completely off of, uh, well, I need to install 32-bit libraries for Steam to go, but I wanted to base it completely off of Debian, but not just a stable version of Debian because a lot of the packages in there are old. And I wanted to put it to the testing branch. Now I've run Debian SID, which is on like the development branch, like the bleeding edge. But I think the testing branch, I've never even heard of anybody really having a problem with the testing branch. So it's almost like a rolling release with newer packages and that would be the base. And I think too many people are focused on distribution and they end up installing a fork of a fork. Uh, meaning you got Debian, you got Arch, and pretty much everything's forked off of that. Yes, there's Fedora and some other odds and ends, um, <laughs> OpenSUSE and some other ones that uh, frankly just don't matter because they're just a little weird when it comes to getting guides working on them. So usually Debian and Arch is where most people settle in the Linux realm. And I wanted to do it off of Debian, uh, specifically Debian testing, because I think we could create an amazing experience that locks a user in and then makes scripts to do everything else instead of having this full-blown desktop environment. And that's really what I want to do with this right here. Now, you might be looking at this kind of ugly right now uh, because I haven't really cleaned up like the poly bar and, and really themed out a lot of things here. But I really wanted to get in here and start adding exactly what a new user might need. And then they don't have to break their system by installing a bunch of packages or worry about uh, doing a massive update on Arch after they installed a bunch of crap through the AUR. Everything would just be there and it would stay there. And it would be very, very stable. And the reason why I kind of had this idea, one, I was talking to uh, my new hire at work, Dak, big shout out to him. But, you know, he said, you know, I, I'm on there, but sometimes, you know, it's easier just to come back into Windows. And I'm like, yeah, I find myself doing the same thing because I've been a Windows user for 20 something years. And I was like, you know what, what if there's just like a, a stable, perfect distro with everything on it? And I was like, I can do that. We could do that. And everyone always helps out whenever I'm live streaming this creation of this tool to say, hey, oh, you missed this or, or you need to check this out. And some of it's not very helpful, but some of it is. And I love that. 
And I think what we can do is make a distro like this, which you might be thinking, well, as a tiling window manager, a lot of people aren't gonna want that, and that's true. But where Linux shines is its uniqueness. Instead of trying to be like a Windows or a Mac, why don't we teach people how to just feel freaking awesome when they use their computer? Like when I'm on here, and I, let me let me get this, and I have like my little split keyboard. Ah, I can't really see it, <laughs> but this little split keyboard here, and I'm in my tiling window manager, and I'm jamming out. I gotta say, it's the best I ever felt on a computer. I feel like this mastermind genius behind the scenes that's just making something completely awesome, even though I'm like editing a, a some file in Vim or something. You know, it, it's something minor that I think anybody in the world can do. And really the only thing keeping your average normie from doing a split keyboard with all the tiling window manager goodness is the barrier of entry. It's so damn high. And I mean high. Uh, a lot of people don't want to do that. And a lot of the stuff I look up and say, hey, how do I make my desktop look like this? Or, oh, look at that rice. It looks amazing. I'm going to see how to modify my desktop in that way. It ends up just a, a cobbled mess. Or uh, better yet, you just can't get there because the instructions are incomplete. Or they've used a gajillion different custom modifications and we're you know, compiling a bunch of programs and they're just not there. Uh, there's so many things that you see. And what I think I'm going to do, I know this is what I'm going to do, not what I think, but I know this is what I'm going to do, is I'm going to create this and then I'm going to make a guide of how easy it is to install and then modify the way users use their computer. Because once you get into here and you start flipping through here and you're, you're launching into stuff, you're going into your browser, you're quitting, you're, you're pulling up a bunch of terminals, you're doing all that, it feels just amazing. And I want more people to feel that without all the pain and suffering of setting it all up tediously over days if not weeks maybe even to fail but i'm going to set it up to where you just launch it and then when you want to change something i just you run a script and that script will fix these configuration files to your pc and that's really the end goal with this distribution i really want to make it amazing i really want people to use it in a way that uh, they never use their computer before because I think only probably like one percent of Linux users have probably used this type of setup, and it's the best I've ever felt being on a computer. And I want other people to feel that too. So that's the whole purpose of this. It'll still be called Debian testing. I mean, I'm not gonna say hey, it's gonna be a new distro, so to speak, but it will be based off the granddaddy, what everything else is based off of. It'll have all the packages you need. You shouldn't need to install anything. I'm going to basically game on it. I'll get everything going exactly as it should be. And then uh, we'll, we'll create an ISO. We'll, we'll do some stuff with this to where everything's great. And that's really what I want to get to. That's where we're at. Um, and uh, this is something that's probably going to take a couple of weeks. So obviously videos and stuff like that might might be a little sparse here and there. I'm going to try and at least stick to my one video a week. But this is really what I'm dedicating a lot of my time to. And I imagine it'll take uh, at least a month, probably close to Christmas, uh, that we see more of a final finished product uh, that's probably bundled too. I, I normally would just do an image, and this time around... I will be doing a full ISO, bundling it up like you would see so many other Linux distros do. But I'm just going to call it Debian. <laughs> Debian done right. <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. We'll take a poll and figure it out on a live stream. But you're going to see quite a few of my live streams. Tuesday and Friday is usually when I live stream over on the main channel. And uh, I absolutely love this. And I want more people to experience... Uh, the minimal nature of it all, even though this is 1,600 packages with a whole bunch of stuff in it, uh, it's still quite a bit lighter, and it feels just amazing with, you know, it's only using like a gig of RAM, and I think I even have Brave open too, yeah, I have Brave open, so that's probably using like probably 800, 800 megs of that, that gig of RAM, uh, but I wanted people to actually see this, because this feels like 
an amazing desktop. And better yet, people can't break it as easy as other stuff. And they can update it as much as they possibly want. There's not going to be any, oh, well, you installed something from the AUR, or oh, this is compiled, this dependency is missing. None of that garbage. We're going to we're gonna do it right. Because I really feel like I'm sick of distros, and I'm sick of people just forking a fork of a fork, and then just botching it up. And I think no, nay, I know we can do better. And I wanted to see, take a stab at it. Because at the end of the day, this is not a great experience for a new user, as shown by Epos Vox and Linus as, as new users. They're not necessarily technical, but pretty technical. Uh, I'd say far more technical than your average user. And if they're not figuring out or they're having such a difficult time, we're doing something wrong. And that's where I'm at. So, yeah, I'm going to try and do something and set it up the way I think a Windows user would, but with a slight twist and modifying it to where most people will have to get used to keyboard shortcuts. And instead of the mouse and keyboard orientation, but have like a little cheat sheet you just pull up when you forget those keyboard shortcuts. And then it teaches them to use a computer differently. And it'll teach them... Just something completely better. But I've rambled too long. I just kind of want to give a little sneak peek over here. It's been a little bit since my last video. And I just have all this rattling around. And it's something that I'm just extremely passionate about. And I want to kind of give folks an idea of what I'm doing with it. Because just installing KDE or installing some other desktop environment, I think will just end in disaster again for many new users. And... Uh, instead of emulating some other system, the true power of Linux is the terminal, is the server experience. And for those that want to expand into that and have a stable desktop environment uh, experience or stable desktop experience, uh, I'll make scripts that you can just run here, have basically everything done through uh, the terminal, but in script form, so you're not sitting there pounding around and looking up, hey, how do I do this in terminal? Uh, and make it very friendly and also very easy for users to get into because too long has tiling window manager sat on the back burner and basically just been walled off from the normies of the world because they can't install it and get it configured properly. And with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one.